One of you were recently asking me about use flags in one of my videos because, as you can see, I have a lot of them set in my make.conf. I'm pretty sure that I already made a video about this, but screw it, I'll make another one. I'm probably more knowledgeable about use flags now than I was back then anyway, since I've been playing with Gen 2 for a longer time now. So what are use flags? They are essentially keywords that represent support and dependency information for different packages, languages, desktop environments, really just about any type of abstract form of technology, really. And use flags are really one of the key things that sets distributions like Gentoo and Funtu and Calculate Linux apart from the vast majority of binary distros like Arch, Artix, Ubuntu, Debian, and so on and so forth. Because use flags actually give you real control over how your system and packages are set up beyond just the aesthetics. Like, you've probably noticed that a lot of people, especially Arch users, will set up their distros through the command line and they might even install a window manager in place of a uh, desktop environment and pretend like they're super leap because they air quotes built their Linux system. But the fact is, unless you're using a source-based Linux system like Gentoo, then all of the extra work that you did is really just that, it's extra work. I mean, I guess you could say that you're saving disk space since Arch and Artix only come with the packages that you want and they don't have extra ones you might not need on one of those just works distros. But I think most of us have plenty of gigabytes, if not terabytes of disk space. So you might as well just use Linux Mint because the packages on all of these binary systems are built the same. Anyway, enough picking on the binary boys. Let's get back to the use flag. So let's say that you wanted to build one of those elite systems that the cool kids use where you just have a window manager instead of a full desktop environment. So you might think to yourself, well, let's just install DWM or i3 or some other window manager and call it a day. Well, what you could do is you could take things a step further and you could disable the use flag for those desktop environments. So here in my make.conf, you can see that I have KDE and I have the GNOME use flag disabled because I'm not going to be using KDE. I'm not going to be using GNOME. So what this is going to do is every single package that I go to install, which has optional support for GNOME or KDE, like Firefox or Thunar or probably just about any type of graphical program, it's going to be compiled without support for that package, which is great for a few reasons. One, it reduces the time that it takes to compile, which is great because that's one of the more time consuming things that we end up doing on Gentoo. And the binary that we get from that compilation process also is gonna have some benefits in and of itself because it's going to be unique compared to the generic binaries that all of those other Linux users, all those binary boys are running. So if there's some type of exploit that were to appear in that binary, such as a buffer overflow, uh, your binary might actually end up being immune to it just because of how you compiled it. If that particular part of code uh, that is being exploited is excluded from your binary, if it ended up being a part of code produced as a result of having GNOME support or KDE support, uh, then yeah, you're going to be immune from it. You're not going to succumb to that particular exploit. And of course, your... Um, packages are going to end up using less resources, they're going to end up using less RAM and less disk space when a lot of use flags are turned off for them. Same thing with systemd. So if you're building a system with OpenRC or Runit or some other type of init system besides systemd, there's really no reason to build support for systemd into your packages. It's just, it's useless, it's unnecessary compilation cycles, it's unnecessary resources being used on your system. And the same thing follows for most of these use flags, because you can see most of them, they have that hyphen in front, which means that we're disabling them. 
Uh, so for example, I don't use clam AV, so I disabled its use flag. I don't use QuickTime, so I disabled its use flag. I don't connect iOS systems or iPods to this Gentoo system, so I disabled their use flags. Um, this CSS use flag over here, um, this is something for, as far as I know, it's for reading. Uh, it, it allows you to read encrypted DVDs. So I don't even have a DVD drive in this desktop that I built here. So I, there's no reason that I would need it, right? I'm not even reading regular DVDs, let alone encrypted ones. So I disabled the use flag. Um, the 3D FX use flag, um, where do I have that? Right here. So this use flag here, uh, it's supposed to enable support for Voodoo chipsets. And I don't even have one of those chipsets in this system. I think I even have support for this disabled in my kernel, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, you can you can add or subtract support for this directly in the kernel. So since I subtracted the support for it there, I also went ahead and disabled the use flag. So I think you kind of get the point. Um, now you can also globally enable use flags for packages that support them as well. So uh, one example that I have here is Elsa, um, not Salsa, I got food on the brain, uh, <laughs> also. So if um, they support it, um, packages that don't need to have pulse audio or they don't need to have jack in order to have sound in them, like Firefox is one example, uh, you don't actually need pulse audio to get that working. Uh, I believe the same thing applies for OBS and um, uh, what's the other program that I use? Audacity, yeah, for recording audio as well. They don't actually need to have Pulse Audio or Jack. They can work off of just Alsa. So I went ahead and uh, put this use flag there so that when I'm emerging packages, they know to just build with that Alsa support. Uh, don't try to pull in Pulse Audio or Jack or anything like that. And so far, it's been working. Um, another example that I have in here is uh, LibreSSL. So as you guys know, I've disabled OpenSSL in this system and built all of my packages against LibreSSL. Uh, it works for most packages, doesn't work for Firefox, so I'm still experimenting with different browsers to figure out which browser I'm going to go with moving forward because I really don't want to have to use uh, OpenSSL with a browser. There's a couple ones that do support LibreSSL. Um, I might look into a different uh, SSL library, I what was it? Somebody mentioned Bear SSL and also Rust TLS. So I might start looking into those if they actually do have more support. Um, I kind of have my doubts that they will, considering that LibreSSL is probably the second most popular uh, library for that. And obviously it doesn't have nearly as much support as OpenSSL does. Um, and then the other use flags that I have that are enabled here are LTO and um, Graphite as well. So we have the LTO here and then Graphite. So of course those are uh, link time optimization and then the Graphite optimizations will be applied to all packages or at least whenever they are supported. Uh, now, even if you don't go and set any use flags yourself in Gentoo, there are some that are going to get set by default um, whenever you go ahead and set up a Gentoo system. Uh, so it's going to be set in your profile. And of course, your profile that gets chosen uh, during your Gentoo installation um, when you're just setting it up. And you can see your profile with eSelect Profile Show. So you can see on my system, I'm using the default Linux uh, AMD 64 17.1 Harden. So this is the Harden profile, and that's going to tell Portage to build all of my packages with those specific Harden use flags. Um, same thing if you were using Multilib, if you chose that profile instead, then all of your packages, uh, Portage would be building all of your packages with support for Multilib. So that's what you can do on your profile. And like most things in Gentoo, 
we can have very granular control over our use flags. So we don't have to just turn them on or off at the global level in our make.conf, we can turn them on or off on a per package basis. So that's what we have going on here with package.use. Uh, and there's actually a lot of use flags which don't even have global settings. They only have a per package setting or it might just make sense to set it on a per package basis like uh, these Luajit ones, for example. <clears throat> um, I just have them set on a per package basis because it's required for uh, these. These are basically dependencies for NeoVim. So I don't want to enable every single package to have Luajit, right? I just want that for the NeoVim dependencies and that's it. Um, and then you can also disable packages on a per package basis. I have a lot of that being done with um, the graphite and LTO flags because there's quite a few packages which don't support it. So this is all pretty much just copied from the LTO overlay into my package.use. Um, a lot of these I don't even have installed, but these are just things that other people have realized. I, I think they call it the workaround folder where it's basically packages where you need to either disable graphite, LTO, or both in order to get the package to end up building correctly. So I hope that this gives you guys a good understanding of use flags. Uh, if it did, be sure to share this video so that other people can learn from it as well. Leave a like on this video and subscribe with notifications on so that you know when new content is released. Bye now.